47th day of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine. The Russian military continues to violate every possible rule of war and commit crimes against humanity. Russia resorted to a chemical attack in Mariupol. The invaders' forces used a poisonous substance of unknown origin against Ukrainian military and civilians in the city. It was dropped from an enemy drone, reports the Azov Regiment defending the death city of Mariupol. The victims have respiratory failure and a vestibular ataxic syndrome. The effects of an unknown substance are being clarified. The day before, on Russian television, a Russian fighter from the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, Eduard Basurin, confirmed the intention to use chemical weapons in Mariupol. He stated that Ukrainian defenders should be blocked at the Azovstal plant and then carry out a chemical attack. In a new statement, the President Volodymyr Zelensky reminded the world leaders that the possible use of chemical weapons by Russia had already been discussed. The brutal extermination of civilians continues in the occupied parts of the city. Witnesses report that Russists, guards and Kadyrov groups are making illegal arrests. Detainees are tortured and shot for any pro-Ukrainian expression. Even patriotic tattoos can be considered as the ground for the death penalty. Part of the town's people end up in filtration camps. About 10,000 people are currently held there. The filtration procedures are slow. After all, the enemy is interested in covering its positions with live men, peaceful Mariupol residents. The blockade of Mariupol has lasted for more than a month. Air raids there have not stopped. The Russian military does not allow civilians to leave the city. About 100,000 people still remain in Mariupol. In the Kyiv region, the police continue to uncover the new evidence of genocide by the Russians against the Ukrainian people. Thus, in the village of Shevchenkovo, the bodies of six dead civilians were found on the territory of a private house. The occupiers had shot people in the head and dumped them in the cellar. And this is the village of Buzova. The day before, a mass grave with dozens of tortured people was found there. The head of Buzova, Lyudmila Zakabluk, says that Russians killed more than 50 locals in the community. Там воно є машина, де згоріло дитятко 17 років, одні кісточки залишилися, і жінки пів голови знесло. Далі там ось туди далі, там чоловік згорів, коло машини лежав. На тополі там розірвало машину вщенто, до людини осталась нога й рука. Meanwhile, in the village of Makariv in the Kyiv region, they found an Akita Inu dog that had been waiting on the porch of their house for almost a month. As it turned out, the woman was brutally killed by the Russians. One of the occupiers took her to a neighbor's house, where he raped her and then brutally stabbed her. No one knows how many days the woman was tortured. No one could come to her because several local residents were locked in the basements. And those who managed to stay at home could not even go near the windows. Gunfire was immediately heard. This was reported by former Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs Anton Hirashenko. Volunteers tried to take the local Khatika to the shelter, but he refused to leave. The police also continued to clean up the liberated territory of the Bucha district of the Kyiv region. About two dozen boxes with enemy anti-tank mines and unexploded ammunition were found in the village of Andreevka. In the village of Lipivka they found 30 anti-tank mines. Ten of them were demined on the spot after the sappers were called in. The occupiers deliberately acted in such a way as to make it as dangerous as possible to return to the occupied areas. Через дії російської армії наша територія на сьогодні є однією з найбільш забруднених мінами у світі. Я вважаю, що це також повинно розглядатися як воєнний злочин 
російських військ. Вони свідомо зробили все, щоб вбити чи покалічити якомога більше наших людей, навіть тоді, коли були змушені відступати з нашої землі. The owner of the legendary stable cupboard, whose photo went around the world and became a symbol of the indestructibility of the Ukrainian people, has survived. Journalists from the OnePlus One TV News service managed to track her down. On February the 25th, the second day of the full-scale war, Nadia was still in Borodanka, Kyiv region. When the Russians dropped air bombs on her house, she hid in the basement of a nearby apartment building. The next day, the woman left the town and went to the west of the country. I Nadia's family had just moved into this house when it was built in 1986. Chernobyl catastrophe killed her husband. Then her eldest son died, and she lived alone with her youngest son. He was the one who installed the kitchen unit, but two years ago he was gone too. And here is the surviving sculpture on the locker from Vasilkivsky Majolika, which is famous throughout the world. Nadia Dmitrievna received it as a gift 40 years ago. The woman says the cockerel has survived and the Ukrainians will surely survive. According to the state emergency service, rescuers pulled out from under the rubbles the seven more dead bodies in Borodanka, the town that suffered the most from the occupiers in the Kyiv region. Since the beginning of the work, 19 dead people have been found. During the last day, the intensity of shooting has increased. The enemy has started to attack more often and expanded the geography of bombardment. They use multiple launch rocket systems, artillery and mortars. 47 According to preliminary information, there are eight dead people, including a 13-year-old child. Also, there are 19 injured, including two children of four and nine years old. In Kharkiv, work is underway to clear the explosive substances. Oi! In different districts of Kharkiv, the sappers started to clear the delay action mines. The soldiers have scattered such small munitions in plastic cases in the backyards of the residential houses and just in the streets. The authorities call the city residents not to leave their shelters as such mine can explode at any time. According to the state emergency service, almost a half of the territory of Ukraine may need clearance. It is about 300,000 square kilometers. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an unusual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal. <laughs>